Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. What's up? Everything. <laughs> what? I don't know. All things are up. I feel like everything's sort of, uh, all systems go for full force ahead. I feel like we're sort of firing on all cylinders. That's the U USMA systems engineer. Oh yeah, all systems uh, go. West Point systems engineering. Uh, yes. Slogan, tagline, yes. all systems go. I was thinking about a few things. Yes. It's one of these moments where there's a bunch of things to me that are in my mind and I, but they're all related, but they, to most people, they seem unrelated. So if you remember a few days ago, I don't remember where we were. I was trying to find a cold beverage Yes. and I really just wanted a bottle of water. Yeah. And the only thing op o available was a Coke machine and a Pepsi machine. Yeah. And then I said to you, isn't it weird that they're right next to each other, the Coke machine and the Pepsi yes. machine? Because yeah. they're technically competitors. Mm -hmm. And you had an interesting take on that. And then it spun into a whole other bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the psychology of it is is that, because um, you, you would think, why, you know, why are they always together, the, yeah. the machines? And the, the, but the psychology changes from do I want to Coke and not Coke? It's a distinction, identity, other problem. Do, do I want a Coke, not Coke, or Pepsi, not Pepsi? When you put them together, it's do I want a Pepsi or a Coke? Right, and there's no third option. There's no third option of not having one. It's it's do I do I want this or this? And so what they see when they put them together is that both increase their sales. Right. Because because we've taken out the essentially remove the third option, which is not to get anything. Which is neither Coke nor Pepsi. Yeah. Which is a whole universe of other possible A whole beverages. universe of other things, yeah. The most universal of which is water. Yeah, water, which uh, is is the corporate sponsor of, well, now uh, water is actually corporatized, right? But yeah. it used to be that water was just everywhere. Well, but now... But I was going to say, we could make water... The corporate sponsor of this episode, which is like this, you know, episode, this episode is brought, brought to you by water. Water. Drink some. A nutritious it's choice. <laughs> <laughs> A non goop choice. Exactly. Non liquid true. goop. Non liquid goop. That's like IV goop, Coke and Pepsi. Yeah. It's, it's not bad. good. It's not good. It's not good. It's sugar water. Well, and it reminded me also of your Gatorade story. Yeah. The kid in, in the, the sporting goods store who had the choice of we literally. Told that in, uh, another that episode. episode was yeah. There. The choice there in a sports store was Gatorade or soda. Yeah. There was no water. Right. There was no choice other right. than two things that compete with each other. Yeah. Most people think of things as either or, you know, that there's not a <clears throat> middle ground. If there was one thing, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to increase your cognition and increase yeah. your ability to think. And thinking, obviously, is the skill that underlies all skills. So thinking is pretty important. Um but there's one thing that you need to do to, if you're going to get started mm -hmm. to think better is to love reality. And that sets up this distinction between your mental models and reality and which one do I choose, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, choose reality, yes, not your mental models. Because if you choose your mental models and you fit reality to your mental models, that's confirmation bias. So we want to we want to choose reality. So the first step is sort of love reality, understand reality bias is that like you have the, this mental model mm -hmm. and that mental model is a representation, but not the same thing as reality. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you've done that, then the next thing is to realize that most of our mental models are incredibly bivalent. Mm -hmm. Bivalent just means two veils, two Think of a veil like a like in a um, uh, what do you call those? Like a wedding. Yeah, or, like in a wedding, or like or, a welder's mask. Or, sure. I don't yeah, know. any a veil that comes down over your face, right? Yeah. So bivalent is like two veils. In the veil, maybe you had a red veil and a and a white veil, and so you're going to see the world with a red tinge, or you're going to see the world with a white tinge, mm -hmm. or something like that. So, but bivalent means that you have two veils that are right? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Most of our mental models, most of our thinking has been taught to be bivalent. Yes. 
for sure. Both taught and incentivized. So it's something we learn in school and it's something that we're incentivized in school and work to be bivalent. Mm -hmm. And that would be fine, except for most of reality is multivalent, mm -hmm. meaning there are many veils, not yeah. just red and white or black and white or whatever. Yeah. There's there's mul there's a whole universe of color, you know, yeah. or so metaphorically yeah. speaking. So if we if we understand that that our mental models, our thinking tends to be bivalent, mm -hmm. and reality tends to be multivalent. Yes. Well, that's a big deal because that yes. means that most of our mental models are gonna are gonna wind up short. Yes. So if we can just change that one thing, that's kind of the next step. Love reality, then then focus on bivalency, and then you can get into the more technical aspects of cognition and metacognition and DSRP and all that kind of stuff. It's hard to see that your mental models are bivalent when everything around us is pushing bivalency. Yeah. These these sort of false, you know, either or choices that are in advertising, they're in politics, they're in um they're in academia. A leads to B yeah. and that's the only way it is. You know, like there's all of these things w around us that if we're not thinking about it are just we're just going to go with that norm, right? That flow. And so I guess the point is to to be conscious about that and say, well, maybe there's a third option. Maybe there's a shade of gray here. Yeah, the the um, in in science sometimes we we refer to a thing called chaos theory, and chaos theory is about sense. I love it when you get nerdy. I get nerdy. <laughs> in science, there's a thing called chaos theory. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> I like it. So chaos theory is really just about that that the system and the way it behaves is sensitively dependent on the initial condition, the starting condition. Right. Right. Yeah. So it, it's just like saying all this complexity you see could have been really different if the if the starting condition, if the place it started was just a, a, a tiny bit different. It right. could have been ended up dramatically different, right? So um, if we want to understand how we got here mm -hmm. to all this bivalency, yeah. we can go back to the initial starting condition of Western civilization. Oh. And that started with Aristotle. Yes. Right? And and Aristotle and and uh, his idea of the law of the excluded middle. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And the law of the excluded middle is exactly what it sounds like. You exclude the middle. Me. So you have a continuum yeah. of options from black to white, and you exclude the middle. Interesting. <laughs> Which means you have two options, mm -hmm. A and not A. Yes. Right? A and not A. And that's for what? Expediency or? Well, that was just like, you know, he's, he's of the time. trying to figure out the yeah. world. And he saw, you know, you either have this or that. Yeah, and yeah. anytime you have this, you have therefore not this. And that and there's truth to that. Mm -hmm. There's truth that, you know, when you have something, there is the, the negation of that thing. And uh, there's truth to that. But it's not the whole truth. Right. It's not the whole truth. So it is true that there is bivalency in the universe. Yes. But it's it's nested in multivalency, right? So it is true that there are situations in the world every day where you have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. But we've, we've sort of generalized that case to the entirety of the world. And all of our mental models are influenced by this by this generalization which is a false generalization yeah of bivalency so like you said our technology is yeah. entirely based on ones and zeros right uh our our uh legal our legal system mm -hmm. guilty not guilty right our 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 uh political system Democrat, Republican, and look at how difficult it is to get a third option, right? It's like yeah. Coke, Pepsi, you know, like Democrat, Because they're Republican. dominating. Because, yeah, and they they have a vested interest. So mm -hmm. why do they always show up together? Same reason Coke and Pepsi. To leave out the Because then, then you're not asking yourself, 
Democrat or not Democrat or Republican or not, you're, you're going, will it be Democrat or Republican? Those are my only two options. They're limiting your choices. They're limiting your choices. Yes. And they're making it so they're the only game in town, right? Yes. And and there are many, many more choices. There are many, many more choices in all these different uh, mm-hmm. places. So you said you said a minute ago, and you did this thing with your hands where you said binary fits inside of mm-hmm. um, multivalency. Yeah. And so I guess I would pick at that a little bit more. You're saying that in a world that actually exists where there is a middle, where there's yeah. continuum, shades mm-hmm. of gray, however you want to, whatever metaphor you want to use, are you, were you saying then that you can still make a choice, a, an either or choice inside of a, a world of sort of and both? In other words, you can, you can be binary inside of a multivalent world yes, when it's functional are, when it's functional and when it's when it's necessary but you don't want to overgeneralize that by and in other words if i say do you want a roast beef or a turkey sandwich like that's a binary if, if on the menu right. there's roast beef or turkey then that's binary but there is the option of buying roast beef and turkey and making a roast turkey beef sandwich right like <laughs> yeah. you the, like there's always a Other options, meat. a minced meat or mixed, mixed meat, meat or sandwich, whatever. That's what they call it. Sometimes things are set up to make it seem like it's binary. But in reality, it is not binary. And that's not to say that there aren't real world situations that are binary. Mm-hmm. It's just to say they're the anomaly, not the norm. The norm is multivalency. The exception is bivalency. And we've got it reversed. We've got the the norm yeah. in our mental models is bivalency, mm-hmm. and the anomaly or the exception is multivalency. Right. And right. so the more we build our mental models with that bias, the more often we're going to be wrong about nature and reality. And right, because you know. of the mismatch you said earlier, which is yeah. if we're thinking that everything exists in two states, but the reality is that it, it, it's mul- multiple states. It's yeah. um, to me, one of the biggest effects of that is the idea of causality versus webs of causality, mm-hmm. right? So we're always looking for an A to B solution, but the truth is there's a whole web of things that are, are feeding into any given issue. Yeah, it's just a lot more complex. So we're always looking for like cause, effect. What's the cause? Well, the cause is a web of causes. Right. It's a web of causes. Yeah. So, I mean, this should, th- this is a kind of HMB happy. I talked about that in uh, the, couple, last the last episode or a couple episodes ago. The happy mind loan emoji. Yes, HMBE. This is kind of an HMB moment. It is. So, just think about this for a second. Anything that is caused, mm-hmm. right? So, the effect. So, there's a cause and an effect. Yes. Anything that's an effect, which is everything, because everything is an effect of something. Yes. So anything that is an effect has a cause, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a cause. It has a web of causes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's true for everything in the universe. So there's nothing in the universe that has a singular cause. Nothing. Everything in the universe has a web of causality. So the next time you want to blame something. Yes. Take a more systemic view and see that while that thing might be part and parcel of, of, of the cause, it is it is not, while it might be part, it's not parcel. Okay. Right? Yeah. While it might be part of the cause, it might be a huge part of the cause, mm-hmm. but it's not entirely the cause. There's a web of cause. And what we're often doing in, in business, in corporations, yeah. in, in government, in, you know, families, in, uh, in relationships, is we're always trying to blame some cause. Right. We're trying to find the cause, the cause, mm-hmm. and we're trying to blame the cause. Why do you think we do that? It's easy. It it's makes us easy. feel good, right? It makes us feel it's like easy. we got shit done. And we feel like we figured it out. We feel like we figured it out. We're, I mean, so, smart. we're so smart. I found we... the cause. It's, it's Bob. Let's fire Bob. <laughs> It's always Bob. You know, Bob did it. Let's fire Bob. <laughs> and you're like, okay, fire Bob, and let's see whether or not you still have the problem. 
happens. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you're gonna still have that problem because the problem is a pattern. Yeah, it was a bunch of stuff. It was a bunch of stuff. And Bob was just a you know part, part of, of part of it all. Or in the wrong place. At the wrong wrong time. place, wrong time. You know, yeah, whatever. Wow. But we feel this sense of like oh we've 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 resolved this right. Well, and we have control over yeah. a situation. And, and I'm not again. I'm not saying. You know, take violent crime, for example. You have somebody that, that does something horrible. Yes, of course. The, the, we can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. We c can and must and, and hold them accountable for the violent crime that they've done. But we also, sh so that we don't have more violent crime, we have to think about what are the web of causality that led that person to this, to this event? Interesting. And what can we do about that web of causality? Along with yes. dealing with the person that's committed this violent crime, so I'm not I'm not saying like this has nothing to do with like letting people off or not holding people accountable or anything like that. No, 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 no. It's just to say that there is a web of causality, and if we don't deal with the web of causality, then we're gonna just keep creating people who do these kinds of things. Right. Because it's it's like there's a factory mm -hmm. that's outputting people yeah. that do these kinds of things. And we keep dealing with the output, but we don't deal with the factory. Yes. There was a really good study by the Children's Defense Fund mm -hmm. many years ago when I was a graduate student. Who's the nerd now? Me. <laughs> but I'm fine with being a nerd. I've always embraced it. Was it was a really good study. It was a great study. It was a seminal <laughs> study. It was a really important study. Okay. And it was looking at the issue of um, teen pregnancy. And we, in the, I don't know if you know, in the 80s and 90s, we had this huge surge in teen pregnancies. And everybody was trying to figure out what the cause was. Right. And they were debating about uh, access to contraception. They were debating about quality of schools. They were debating about geography. Like they were, you know, and, and so, of course, it became a political debate and uh, about contraception and yeah, providing, yeah. how do you provide teens sex education and, and contraception? And the CDF did this study and they said, well, let's actually look at what's really happening in this young girl's life. What are the, what is the web of stuff that's happening? And they figured out that there were all these variables between socioeconomic status, access to, you know, nutrition, health, all these things. And that, and that those things combined led to one variable that was the deciding factor, which was hopelessness. Hmm. When a young woman felt that she had no options, mm -hmm. then she would do that. But they couldn't have gotten to that had they not been open to the idea of all of these other factors and webs in that causality yeah, exactly. to say, we, and, and the thing about hopelessness is hopelessness was related to every single mm -hmm. one of those pieces. Mm -hmm. And so then they had to go and work on each one of those from the perspective of how do we create a future of hope for these young women yeah. through education, through nutrition, through contraception, through this, through parental relationships. Like it was amazing. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's a great that's a great example, because what people will say is, well, we don't have the time or the money or the whatever to go and solve all those issues. And you go, well, OK, that's fine. I That's that makes sense. You don't have the time to solve all of these things in order to deal with this thing. Right. But apparently you have the time to keep dealing with this thing. Right. Because that's what you're deciding. You're not deciding you're not deciding not to deal with these things and this goes away. Right. You're deciding to not deal with these things and have more of these effects. Right. So you, do you have the time? Do you have the money to deal with these effects and their knock-on effects? Mhm. Mm or should we do the job right and figure out this web of causality that's leading to these this pattern of behavior? Right. And what they also do a lot is they say, we're going to work on this one. This yes. is the one. Yep. And they spend a lot of time and a lot of money. That's right. And they put all their eggs in that basket. And then they're like, oh, why isn't changing it? Why yep. isn't it changing it? Why are we getting the outcome? And it gets worse. Oh, It my. gets worse. <laughs> because once you've done that, then you say... We tried that. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. So you throw it out. Mm -hmm. And then you go, okay, let's do that one. <laughs> oh, we tried that. It didn't work. Let's throw it out. Yep. 
right? And then the next one. And then the next one. And what they don't realize is that it's the it's the dynamic of these things. It's the interrelationships among them. Among these things, among the parts of a whole. Mm -hmm. The cause is a web of relationships of a bunch of parts mm -hmm. that make up a whole that are leading to this effect, and right? You have to have so that all. this is the and 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 so if we try to if we try to focus in on any one of them at a time, we might not see the results that we're looking for. Right. And then we have the costly mistake of ruling that out as one of the causes, but it's one of a dynamic Dynamics. of causes. Yeah. And that is a mistake that we make over and over and over again in policy and corporations and all kinds of things. All kinds of decisions. All kinds of decisions. I mean, even, you know. Um, even personal relationships. And silly decisions. Yeah. You know, you rule things out before you actually know. Even stuff with our, you know, your kids and stuff like that. You know, you, you're always My looking for that. Kids. Our kid, like one's kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like just... we're always looking for the one thing. Yeah. And it's a bunch What's of What's causing this? And you're like. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of things. It's a yeah. bunch of things. Well, even even we were talking about technology. Yeah. You think about the addiction to phones. Yeah. It's not the phone. No. It's all of the other stuff that's a web of it's stuff. A lot of things. The social, the distraction, the manipulation by the people who are creating it. It's all of these things, yes. right, that are causing that problem. It's not just right. one thing. That's right. I want to talk about the things that are excluded because, you know, I'm kind of... Um, what would the word be? Oh, I don't even know the word. I'm I'm strangely focused on politics and binary, mm -hmm. bivalent polarization, yes. purposeful polarization, yes. manipulation. Othering. What we call othering. I I think that 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 right now is a time where the dangers of this bivalency are becoming more and more obvious. Yeah, I, I, so so there's a in in DSRP which we talk about a lot. Yes. Um in DSRP the D of DSRP is made up of two elements. Mm -hmm. Distinctions is, is the D. It's mm -hmm. made up of two elements. One is the identity mm -hmm. and the other is the other, mm -hmm. right? So there's the thing and the not thing, right? Yes. And and in that sense that is very binary. Right. It's, it's identity and other. Where it becomes somewhat not binary is the other can be its own identity. Mm -hmm. And when you add the R and the S and the P or perspectives in particular, you see that this binary can exist in a much larger continuum of, of binary. So you can have red and not red, but red can be part of a rainbow of colors right, right? so there are many right. more options but yes there is the binary of there's red and then there's not red right right bivalency occurs within multivalency so distinctions is made up of the identity and the other and there's all kinds of as you were referring to manipulations and and shenanigans Oh, I like that word. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. That's that's a that's a great word. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, that that we do around othering. Mm -hmm. So we kind of focus on the identity, and then we otherize some group, some person, right. some argument. Mm -hmm. Right. We create straw men out of a person's argument. That's kind of othering it, and mm -hmm. we ignore that the other person exists. We we mischaracterize the other person or yeah. their identity or their whatever we don't even recognize them as a as an existent thing we pretend that they're not even yeah. there we don't invite them to meetings there's yeah. all kinds of othering yeah right it's terrible all kinds of othering and and when we have a binary system like democrats and republicans then really kind of all you have to do is otherize so right. it's like this is who we are, and they are the worst. They're you know, this else. is who we yeah. are, and they are evil. This is yeah. who we are, and they are Nazis. Right. This is who, you know, yeah. no matter who it is, they're both saying that. Yeah, about the other. About the other, and ironically, we talked about this in a, a recent episode about this in in marriages and relationships. Yes. Right, where you, we have relationships brought to you by the number two versus relationships brought to you by the number three. Mm -hmm. When when you're talking about relationships brought to you by the number two and you have some issue that you don't like, 
then the only place to put that is the blame is it goes with the other. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. the national debt, mm -hmm. who created it? Well, they did. It's always they did. Both of them. And you're like, well, I'm pretty sure you both created it. Yeah. Right. Like, so yeah. uh, we're always othering. And so being metacognitive, what we want to do is try to minimize the amount that we other. Mm -hmm. Because it's unethical, it's unfair, it's mm -hmm. it's not really, it doesn't make you a good person, it doesn't make right. you feel good about yourself to just constantly be doing shenanigans. This might seem a little bit more, uh, more complicated because the reality is there are two choices, mm -hmm. right? The way that the system is set up, there's two choices. You mean the political system? In the political yeah, system. Yeah. And we can also talk about Coke and Pepsi and yeah, guilty yeah. and not guilty. Yeah. But in this case... You're right that they're always blaming the other, right? Uh -huh. But there's also sort of collateral damage in that this is how it's framed for the American for people. For the American people, yeah. And there, there is seemingly no other option. Yes, even though there are. Right. I mean, they, they, they are invested in there not being any other right. option for the American public, but there, but there should and could right. easily be other options. Right, which means, yes, if, if you're a person who who says, and I think this is true with Coke and Pepsi, it's true with Democrat, Republican, any of these choices, take that moment back and say, wait a minute, are there really only two options here? Yeah, and what, like in 308 million people, yeah. are these the two idiots that we have it's the best choice? We have to I offer. mean, this is the best we have to offer? No. This is it? The problem is we needed to ask that question two years ago, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. To get any momentum. Right to start to think about how do we have a non-binary a, a non choice here, right? right? Um, but it's the same thing. So you can say it's about this, but you can say, you know, you're standing at, at um, the cash register and you're like, oh, well, are there more options than what's being put on in front of me? That's right. And you have to ask yourself that question at all times, just like when you're trying to solve a problem. Is it really just this leads to that? Yeah. Should I take a step back? And look for all of that. Yes. Because I know it's there. We know st that there is multivalency in the reality of the problem, that it's a web of stuff. So we I actually, uh, it reminds me of that case that we do of the water desalination plant in, oh, uh, yeah, in yeah. our course at Cornell. Our students love that. And, and this case basically sets it up, you know, where um, it's... It's a case in San Diego of, uh, yeah. of do we want a desal plant for $30 million or not, right? Mm -hmm. And your job is to decide yes or no. Exactly. Right? And and the reason we use this case, and I, I, we're going to let the cat out of the bag with for future students we'll if find they watch, the case. Uh, is, is, is to get students to, because the students will buy into the, the way yeah. the case is framed. Yeah. But there are many other options other than y yes or no. There's mm -hmm. there's a little bit of both. There's maybe, there's yes and some other things. Mm -hmm. And it would be far smarter based on the based on the, 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 the numbers to do a mix of things. Yes. Rather than a yay or nay yes. vote. Mm -hmm. But because it's framed in a particular way, they all get sucked into the yay or nay. Yeah. But so much of it, is about the way things are framed. All of it is right? about how yeah. things are framed. Right. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, well, we'll stick with so much. It, we shouldn't so much say all. <laughs> but, so much. Yeah, I think, so So I guess the idea is that when we come to these situations of life, mm -hmm. just look out, pay attention for the framing of black and white. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that framing. Whenever somebody's framing things in blacks and whites, Mm -hmm. Whenever somebody's framing things in Republicans and Democrats and guilty and not guilty, or the one that I, the, my pet peeve is good and bad, you know, oh, like, yeah. this is good, this is bad. Everybody labels this is, I'm doing mm -hmm. good thing, uh, you know, good and bad. I'm not talking about, you know, there is real bad in the world, you know, You're talking but I'm about talking about like judging, every, yeah. labeling everything, everything you're doing as good or bad, you know, this yeah. is good weather, this is bad weather. It's just weather. It's just weather. It's not. It's not it's good neutral. or bad weather. <laughs> it just right? is. Rain isn't bad weather. Rain is good. Rain is good. Or see what not. I just did? Yeah, see, just, I did it. Right. So we frame things in these ways a lot. Yeah. And be aware to 
try to not frame them that way uh, or try to not be so susceptible to, to buying into that frame. But so much about what we talk about comes down to just having that moment of bringing that subconscious ease into the conscious and saying, well, wait a minute, is it really this or that? Yeah. And just taking a moment to say, what is what is the other possibility? What are the other possibilities here? And and even to the point of, if you if you go a step further, why has it been framed that way for me? Yeah, who is it serving that it's framed, framed that way? Frame that way. Like yeah. Coke and Pepsi are making a lot of money because they've decided to make my choices Coke or Pepsi products yeah. and nothing else. And if you guys want to sponsor the podcast, <laughs> I think we just ruined that part. I think we're pretty much ruling out anybody from ever sponsoring Let's see us. who wants it the most. <laughs> the frame matters. Completely. The way things are framed for you, you should know that they're being framed for you first. And they're time. always framed, by the way. Yes. everybody's Everything always has a perspective associated with it. Everything. So... Even if it's not being intentionally manipulated, you know, it might be unintentional or whatever, everything's coming from a frame. And if statistically speaking, most people's thinking is bivalent, mm -hmm. which it is, it is. Yep. then a lot of those frames, a lot of the way that things are being framed is going to be bivalent. It's going to be black and white framed in some mm -hmm. way, shape or form. So just be aware of it. Just yeah. be aware that the norm in thinking is bivalent, black and white framing. Mm -hmm. The norm in reality is multivalent. Right. And what this sets up for us is a, a disconnect where we get it wrong. And it also sets up this idea of this either or, what sometimes we call the tyranny of either or versus the genius of both and. Yes. Right? Yes. And we don't get the genius of both and or maybe more than both and. Mm -hmm. Because we're constantly suffering from the tyranny of either or, right. either or. You get this option or this option. Yeah. And nature doesn't work that way. Yes. Reality, the universe, doesn't work that way. It's, no. It is the anomaly that it works that way. It's the norm that it works in multivalency. So just be aware of it. So would you, would it be fair to say my smart husband mm -hmm. that we should be looking for that excluded middle or that we should be aware of that excluded middle. if you relate it back to what you're saying about aristotle mm -hmm. would you say that it's looking for that middle or know it knowing that that middle exists yeah i have i have a little pet peeve of of the uh, you know it's pretty technical but it's like Anytime you go looking for something, you're going to find what you're looking for. So if you go That's looking true. to be offended, you're going to get offended. If you go looking yeah. for this or that, you're going to find it yeah. because of confirmation bias, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't say go looking for it, but I would say just be aware. Just be aware that there's this tendency. For it to be excluded. For it to be, for the middle to be excluded. There's Understood. this tendency. There's this bias towards, there's this leaning towards bivalency, a pretty strong leaning in humans yes. towards bivalency in our culture towards bivalency yes. so just be aware of it just be aware of it and question and don't don't put it where it isn't because mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to find beautiful multivalency and and you know great that's awesome right. but be aware of it and try not to participate in it try not to add to it mm -hmm. And and love reality. You know, that's what loving reality is all about is like, let's just let reality be what it is and understand it. And see it for what it and is. And see it for what it is. And if we want to change it, let's like knowing it is the best way right. to change it. If we don't like the way reality is, then the best solution will be to understand how reality is and then change it. Right. Yeah. Just be aware of it. Just you know, metacognition, awareness. Well, and if you love reality and you see reality, then the things that you do are going to be more in line with how they actually exist and you'll be much better off. Yeah, and as a, as a slightly more technical, like if you really want to get into it, like DSRP is the antidote to, to bivalent thinking. Yes. Like if you start practicing more DSRP-like thinking, what that's helping you do is is limit the bivalency that you're, because it'll open up other options. It'll give yeah. you more opportunities, more options. 
in your thinking than just the bivalent ones. Right. And it also will allow you to be bivalent. Yes. But it'll allow you to be bivalent inside of multivalency. Right. You can say, this is black and white from this perspective. But there are other perspectives that make it a range of colors. Yeah. I mean, it's really a new kind of logic. It is a, it's a, it is a multivalent logic. logic. It's an extension of... That is more advanced yes. than the Aristotelian logic. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great place to wrap because I love that. It's always good to wrap on Aristotelian logic. If only we could... <laughs> No, it wasn't that. It was an expansion of Aristotelian <laughs> yes, logic. Yes, right. Okay. Not that that it was beyond that. No, I'm saying we could put a wrap on oh, Aristotelian logic. It was kind of joke. a double entendre joke. I totally kinda, missed it. Yeah. I, I'd be curious to know who else missed it, but probably ever. probably just me. <laughs> no, it could just be me. I don't think so. Um, okay, so this is the moment where we remind people to comment, like, and subscribe. We try on this podcast to help people understand the moves and the structures that help you think smarter, more systemic, and uh, more like reality and faster. And because, faster over time. You know, we That's need right. smarter, more systemic, faster thinking to keep up with all the complexities of today. All right. That's okay. officially That's a wrap. A wrap.